all that is Samara is like a whole whole different world, right? Every time she enters in the set, there is like a, a like an entourage around her. So when I was watching the film, the cinematography kind of evoked the same kind of look as the original. Were you going for that? I mean, it's been a while since I've seen the original, but yeah. it did give me that sense. Uh, well, we we wanted. To, I was working on that with Sharon Mayer, that is an amazing DP. I I watched his premiere movie here in Los Angeles in, in a theater, and I, I called the producers and I say I, I want to work with this guy because he's gonna play with the colors like I, I enjoy playing with the colors, right? He's Sharon Mayer. He did a uh, Whiplash. Uh, so uh, we were tagging Sean and myself about having part of the same look of the of the original Rim movie, but not copy the same look because otherwise, uh, if you remember, the first Rim movie has that dot cold uh, bluish tone through the whole movie, like wash, right? Um, we wanted to to give a little bit of warmth here. We are talking about young people too. Uh, we care much about the palette of colors, like very specific colors to play with, like dark uh, red, uh, like uh, some oranges, uh, and play with the elements. And uh, when we go deep into the ring world, we start the palette of the ring, and slowly we fade it, and we start to lose colors, and we get that, that bluish and that color in the cemetery sequence, for example, and some of those. So yeah, it has like a, been like a, a work behind that, that it's great that you could tell that there is like evolution there and respect for the original too. And I read that Samara takes the actress, it took her six hours to get into costume? Yeah. Wow, yeah. why, why it's so long? A it's, a, it's a while, yeah, it has all the body, special makeup. Aryan is the, the guy in, in charge of, of it and he's amazing. He comes of working with Rick Baker. Uh, he's like really good. I, I, it's very perfectionist too. So yeah, all the makeup, all the masks he has, uh, and, and the hair, and then a special thing that they have so she keeps dripping water all the time. And she walks with that. So all that is Samara is like a whole, whole different world, right? Every time she enters in the set, there is like a, a like an entourage around her. <laughs> yeah. So she had a water, a rig that, yeah. that would she, leave she was water. dripping, she literally was dripping. dripping on set. She was by herself dripping water when she was walking. Actually, that was really, it looked really, really good and frightening at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really, yeah. And uh, you're taking Samara digital now because before we had VHS tapes. So what was the discussion like for that, how to take her into the digital age? Yeah, well, it makes total sense in the world we are living in right now. Uh, now we have like, you know, like uh, not even all the DVDs. Uh, we don't have video anymore, but we have uh, uh, files, pen drives, uh, laptops, iPads, iPhones. So we were talking all the time about that app, the world of the ring to that new new world, the contemporary world we had. So we play with those elements, and, and yeah, and that was a little bit the the idea and the result. Respect the original movie, mm -hmm. but explore what will happen if, if the Samara video course is in, in the, the, the today, right? Um, and we wanted to keep, I specifically wanted to keep the transition from the uh, videotape to the, so that's why at the beginning, if you watch the movie, you'll, you'll see one of the missing videotapes that is the one that is gonna expand and go later, go back, go digital. But I think that now with the time that has passed in the last 15 years, you see now like a, BCR and you are like you sit in a museum. I mean, literally, I was in Madrid the other day, in a museum, and there was a VCR, and I was freaking out. I said, like, how old I am, uh, right? So it's there is like a mystery already when you see that machine that it has something inside that it, that it's kind of mysterious and creepy now. Well, for some audiences, it's probably the first time they've seen a VCR and a VHS. Yeah, tape. Yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. How frightening is that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's pretty scary. <laughs> and what would you say is the biggest challenge in making this movie? 
Uh, well, because it's a franchise and it's uh, very established and there's a huge fan base, uh, the big challenge always is to, to keep the balance between please the, the hardcore fans of this movie, right, that they really love it and they know every single detail of the first ring um, and try to respect that, but at the same time to refresh the franchise, bring other people to it so younger people that they are like 18 now or 15, 20, they haven't seen necessarily the first ring, they can enter in the in the theater and understand the movie and embrace it and, and have a fun ride. So the balance of those elements uh, try to respect the sensitivity of the people who love the first ring and they don't get hard when they see something totally different, like a, like a plane or like, you know, like we are getting like exploring new areas right so it's a balance that is always is always tricky um, I think we did a good balance but in franchises like uh, I, I came because I was working in the crow before that is another cool movie I know how to deal with the fan base and um, first the things you have to love the property and respect them too so that's the, the, the challenge <laughs>